The year is 998. Off in the distance, a large ship comes into sight. The first thing you notice, a large sail with red and white stripes. As they appear on the horizon, they gaze over the surrounding terrain. They are the Vikings. Who were the Vikings? The term Viking comes from the Old Norse language referring to raider or pirate. It was those from Scandinavia who chose to obtain their wealth by force who were considered Vikings. It's here at the very northern tip of Newfoundland that you can find the only remains of Viking habitation in North America. 962 years later, in 1960, archaeologist Hels Ingstad and Anne Stein Ingstad made their way to modern-day Lanso Meadows. Following clues in ancient Icelandic sagas, they traced the steps of Leif Erikson, the first ever European to step foot on North America. Son of Eric the Red, Leif was a skilled leader and explorer. The bounty of timber which existed in Newfoundland, or Vinland as Leif Erikson called it, was a coveted commodity for the growing Viking community in Greenland. After settling in Greenland from Norway, these Norse explorers had to collect resources like wood from other areas of the globe, as Greenland offered little as far as trees, especially those large enough to craft homes and boats. The weather was more favorable back then. The effects of a previous global warming saw temperatures rise a few degrees warmer than they are today, which produced less ice around Greenland and a much safer spring in the northern climates to make the journey by boat. Helge and Anne consulted with the locals, searching for any clues about the established presence of Vikings in the New World. They were pointed here, to a spot where many thought the depressions in the ground came from the homes of the indigenous community. Surveying of the land began, and as they dug, more and more came to light. Much to everyone's surprise, they were about to stumble upon a major discovery. One that shows that Christopher Columbus was not the first to cross the Atlantic. Because of the finds here, Lanzo Meadows became the very first cultural UNESCO World Heritage Site and the first UNESCO site in Canada. During our visit, we had the chance to meet up with Dale, a wonderful, informative park guide. It's with her that we learned about the background surrounding this one-of-a-kind national site. As we progressed through our tour, we were amazed that even today, the homes are simply depressions in the ground, with small mounds of earth outlining the original structure. There is a surprise, however. Parks Canada has painstakingly reconstructed the entire Life Erickson camp. As a year-round residence, this location had buildings suited for its purpose, gathering timber, repairing boats, and gathering resources for the long journey back and forth between here and Greenland. Despite the rocky and mostly inhabitable volcanic island of Greenland, many places along the coast provided enough grassland and forest for the Viking way of life. The Vikings shifted from Norway in the year 870 and remained in contact with their homeland as it only took about eight days to make the journey. It was the seafaring experience that allowed them to become such great naval explorers and how they became the first to come from Europe. Despite its climate, the first 130 years saw the Greenland population of Vikings explode to almost 40,000. Back in Newfoundland, we see forges and blacksmiths. They worked tirelessly to turn iron into nails to primarily repair ships and occasionally help build homes, a tradition that was brand new to this part of the world. It was these blacksmiths that performed the first known acts of iron smelting in the New World. Other trades, such as carpentry, were found here to help prepare wood for transport or to repair boats. For the Vikings, the indigenous people of Newfoundland were a sight to behold. According to the sagas, they said, and early one morning, they saw many skin boats. The strangers rode towards them and stared at them in amazement. The men were dark in complexion, grim looking with unruly hair on their heads. Their eyes were big and their faces broad. They remained there for a while and stared in astonishment. Then they rode off south around the point. Can you imagine living your whole life 
not seen another person from a different race? Imagine things from the other side, riding up in your birch bark canoe and seeing this massive ship ruling the seas. I don't think either knew what to expect or do. Back at the Viking camp, we turned our attention to the women who made the journey over. Now ladies, how old are you? Neither one of you are married. <laughs> Your father's neglected you by a lot, young lady. I've already blamed, yes. yes. We went to the forge. I know. I'm working you, on it. Okay, you're working on it. Ron. Okay. <laughs> You've already talked to the me. I think the, the the young fellow out there with the long dark hair and the dark beard is looking for a wife. It was a privilege of a few to bring their wives. Only the captain and navigator were able to bring their companions. Others, likely slaves, were brought to help in the kitchen, play music, and entertain men. For them, life was especially difficult. Often stuck to smoke-filled kitchens, the average lifespan of a woman was only 30 years, leaving little time for marriage and having children. Life Erickson himself was relatively long-lived, dying at the age of 50. It's amazing how much has changed. A thousand years really can make a difference. Today, we walk through the site and reflect on its past. When you compare the humps and bumps found at the site with the reconstructed sections, it's amazing how much information could be pulled from what seems to be nothing. Parks Canada does an amazing job connecting the past with our present. During your visit, you can dress in traditional attire and tap into your inner Viking, or test your mind in the newly created escape room. Should you attempt this task, be prepared for quite the challenge. Without the help of park staff, we'd likely still be living in that little hut in northern Newfoundland.